Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Morning coffee. Hey guys, Doc. I'm over at the farmhouse project and today I'm going to talk about putting up shiplap, sometimes called, some people call it nickel gap. And today we're talking about putting it on ceilings and I'm going to give you some warnings. At the same time, I'm going to explain the difference between shiplap and nickel gap. I'm going to show you the right way to do it because there are a lot of wrong ways to do this and even contractors don't understand a lot of time. So I'll review it all. So here we go. Hey guys, so yesterday I came out here to the project and uh, I was recording, sorry, I was recording while they were working so it came out kind of rough. So I'm gonna go over a couple points real quick. Number one, what's the difference? By the way, hit that subscribe button because this project's getting close to complete and I'm gonna do a full walkthrough before and after. But hit that red thing, hit that subscribe button and uh, I'll, I'll walk you through the before and after of the whole project and show you a lot more of the interior finishes, which are gonna be really cool. The difference between nickel gap and shiplap. Um, I'm probably grabbing images from the web somewhere. Shiplap is basically just a groove that sits on top of each other. Nickel gap is actually more of a tongue and groove that actually fits inside of itself. When you have nickel gap, you can actually go up and you nail inside the groove and then you put your tongue inside there, put your other piece inside there. Shiplap, you actually don't nail inside the groove and you actually nail on the face of it and then the other piece lays on top. Now, a lot of people are gonna say, well, you should be nailing inside that groove. No, not necessarily. And I'll tell you why, especially on ceilings. There may come a point or there will come a point. There's a lot of stuff inside ceilings and I'm gonna show you that today. There's plumbing, there's electrical, there's drainage systems, there's water lines, and you may have to go up inside that ceiling at some point and do some work. Well, if you use shiplap on the ceiling and you just nail it on the board, you can actually cut that board, you can actually cut a couple boards, pull them off easily, and replace them at some point in time. So why am I only putting one nail? Because I thought a lot about this and I'm in a hurricane zone. And if my roof ever gets taken off here and I get a lot of water damage, uh, I want this stuff to actually sort of let water come through and to be able to take it off and replace it easily. If I start putting, you know, three and four nails per beam, uh, I'll never get that crap off, but now, if I ever had to replace it, I've got one brad on each two by four, basically holding it. If you're using something like a nickel gap where you have a tongue and groove, when you start ripping that out, it's gonna be a nightmare to try and, and replace that stuff. So I actually like to use shiplap on the ceilings. And yes, we're gonna be putting a little bit of adhesive glue on it. That's really important. And putting up sheetrock versus just putting it up on the main beams that are up above. So I'll go over a couple things. So let's go inside. Well, hopefully my gutters will be put back up soon. Look at that grass. That's uh, winter rye. There's some fescue, probably most of that's winter rye. I told Ryan, I said, we need to come over here and fertilize it and cut it. We actually have having some days up into the 50s and 60s, which means that this grass is growing. I also got to go back home and do a pre-emergent weed treatment. I'll do that for you here in a minute. If you're new to our project, this was an abandoned house that looked like crap. <laughs> it was just nasty. And this is the original structure here. And then this is the sunroom that we added. And we actually flipped the house around. So I'm going to walk around and then I'll go inside. But we flipped it around because of this. We have a beautiful three acre pond. We have all these woods, total privacy, cow pasture over here. And why not make this the front of the house we just did the stone veneer project if you didn't see the stone veneer project go over to our channel watch that stone veneer project it has completely changed the feel of this house man what a level um we also did the underpinning of the deck in a special way i put that on video watch that so let's go inside 
Uh, I'm also getting ready to do a video about these here. I'm gonna get, um, I'll show you how we install these and why I install those. Um, but you can see, wow, that's pretty cool there. This is the first time I've seen it. They were here late last night working. But this is shiplap up on the ceiling. Now you're asking yourself, you're asking me why do they have these gaps? So let me explain it a long story short. My trusses run this way. So my trusses or beams up in the ceiling run this way, which means the shiplap has to run this way. The problem is, is it's 30 feet long and shiplap comes in 16 foot sections. And I hate seams. I don't care what you do, I don't want seams. So what I'm doing is I told them we're gonna put a beam here and then we're gonna put a beam here and that makes their life a lot easier. So now they don't have to worry about getting it perfect. They can come in here, they can put it up and we're gonna put a beam across here. Now the story on the beams is interesting. Um, we initially were just gonna buy four by four uh, and rough it up and make it look rustic. But I actually found a, a guy that does, um, that grabs old historic beams. And I found some four by fours that are from a tobacco barn from 17, built of roughly 1795. That shipment is coming in here in about three hours. So maybe I'll even shoot that and show you that when it arrives. But we're gonna put a beam here, beam here. Now, here's the other thing to think about when you're doing your layout. So all my beams up here are running this way. Well now, guess what? Now they run this way in here. So I'm gonna have a transition point. So what we're doing is we're gonna put another beam right up in here to cover that transition point. Got it? Up in here, we had to put LDLs, which are our laminated beams, and we're gonna cover these with a rough cut cedar so we really don't have to worry about the shiplap in here. All right, same thing in here. <laughs> we have a transition where we're running this way and now we gotta run this way. So we're gonna put a beam here. The other issue I've got now is this is longer than 16 feet. So we're gonna put two beams in here. I hope I don't run out of beams. Same thing in the master. Now the master, which was an old nasty garage is now done, but you can see that all the shiplap is up on the ceilings and we're gonna put a beam here and we're gonna put a beam here. What that does, we're just gonna bolt the beams up there. So if I ever have to do any kind of repair work up on the ceiling, um, I can actually unscrew those beams, pop off that shiplap and go ahead and uh, do my repair work and pop it back. Now we're not, I'll give you a warning, don't extensively glue. We're using a, an adhesive, a contractor adhesive but we're only putting a little bit, I'll show you that here in a second, just a little bit of glue on each one of these boards as we pop them up. Now, I will tell you, um, I had a disagreement with my contractor. He goes, oh yeah, we can put shiplap right on the beams. I'm like, no, that's not gonna happen. Uh, you're gonna have a lot of variances, and if this shiplap, you're gonna get dust that eventually will work out through that. So I made them put sheetrock on top of this on every ceiling and then on, and then we went back and put the shiplap. So you want to put shiplap on top of sheetrock. And then, because you, you can't glue it. You can't glue it if you just have beams sitting here and you're nailing into beams. Always go put sheetrock first. It's great for insulation. It's great for noise and dust and dirt and everything, just the overall appearance. It'll help smooth it out a little bit. Next, let's talk about the upside. So don't forget, you're going to have, so as an example, you need to know where this is a ceiling fan. These are can lights. I've got a bunch of electrical stuff, but ups, don't forget what you also have is look at that. So now you have plumbing up in your ceiling. You have plumbing up in your ceiling a lot of times. <laughs> so you want to be aware of that. Now code states that if you're going to cut into a beam and have a piece of exposed plumbing, you're supposed to have a steel plate there so that if anyone goes to shoot a nail they don't shoot into they don't shoot into um they don't shoot into the plumbing and uh austin who's doing all the shiplap work in here he goes he goes well is all the plumbing covered with a steel plate and i'm like dude the people that built this the people that originally built this place were a bunch of rednecks <laughs> i don't know who built it 
It's just haphazard construction. And I'm like, I'm sure that there's not steel plates. So we're having to be a little bit careful there. You don't want to go pop nails into, um, into your finishes. Now the same thing on every wall. So this is the master bath. And then this is a master closet. We have a pop-up hole we had to cut out because there's no other access over here. Any, any place that we have a vanity, so there's going to be a vanity on this wall. Any place that we have a vanity, that wall will have shiplap coming down on behind the vanity. It's just a nice little touch. We did that at the beach house. Works out nice. So when you're doing your shiplap, basically you need to, number one, you need to figure out your beam structure. Number two, you need to strap some lines. Number three, you need to think about all your electrical holes. Number four, you do want to put a little bit of construction adhesive, just a few lines on that. And then you're, you're going to use shiplap. And yes, you are going to shoot right into the face. Now he probably is, it looks like what he's doing here is he is shooting into the, into the tongue of some of these and then he's just going by and putting one other one other hole in the back of it so you can see instead of having two holes he's just got one there oh i got a kink in my neck which tells me that he's shooting into the into the groove of one and then shooting on the face of the other one which is fine to do too <laughs> when you see a man on a ladder he's putting up shiplap this is uh, Austin. Say hey. Say hey, Austin. What's up, guys? Austin is a fantastic finisher, framer, inside guy. That's basically all he does. He's got his helper here. What's your helper's name? Uh, that's Jake. There's Jake. Jake is inside there. So when you have a whole shipload of shiplap, this is what it looks like. And this isn't even all of it. We got more coming, right? Yeah, one more. 4,000 more linear feet. Paint it and when he's cutting this, he doesn't have to be exact on this. Wouldn't it be a pain in the ass to try and gap all that perfectly? Oh man, <laughs> that's whenever you're testing your skill. I mean, cause you have to match this up almost perfectly. Then you have to come in and what, do some kind of spackle or? Yeah, try if, you, uh, if everything doesn't line up well with doesn't matter where you get your material from there's always going to be variances in it so right. this so, is uh doc's taking some time <laughs> away from what we're uh needing to put up here the beams are going to look really good so. yeah they're going to look really good yeah. he's actually austin's going to put them up so yeah i'm gonna let him screw that up not me <laughs> so just so you know we we're not <laughs> we're not slathering uh adhesive on here and this is important it's just small little beads just an extra little hold you know, at some point, and here's where I'm going to talk about this in a minute. Don't forget, there's stuff up in the ceiling. And at some point, you may have to take this down and do a repair. He's just shooting, by the way. What are you shooting? Are you shooting two-inch finish nails? Or what are you shooting? He's not listening to me. These are two-and-a-half-inch 15-gauge. Two-and-a-half-15 is what he's shooting right now. Which is ideal for the ceilings. A little bit more grab power than a 16, but uh, yeah, this is about the only application we're on for right. the 15 out for. And a lot of people are going to say, why don't you nail inside the tongue? Now that's a common question I think of people, and you just don't do it with this kind of shiplap. Yes, or... so this is an actual shiplap here, so um, it laps over each other as opposed to a nickel gap, which is tongue and groove. If we were installing a nickel gap application, we would be shooting into the groove here. Right, so if it was a tongue and groove like nickel gap, then you'd be shooting into the groove, but this yes, is actual overlap. Yes, sir. And they call it shiplap for a reason because as the water runs down it, it actually follows that, yep. that outside groove versus go leaking inside. So that's why. And then you just come over, you just paint it with a little bit of spackle, paint it, and you're all done. Just so you know, Death Rage is playing in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go through our lengths. 
These are our 117 we're cutting. Yep. Those out of... Uh, that's 111. Yep, yeah. so we're cutting those here. And then 136, these are available or? Yep. Okay. A whole stack of all of these. So in case you're trying to figure out what they're doing, basically, you're measuring whether it's a scrap or not. You're writing what size it is, so you know what you can pull from and what you can use. And Essentially, it, right. So we cut our odd lengths out first. Okay. And then we take our drops from that and we go and see where that'll fit to where we have the most efficiency out of the board and the least amount of waste. Gotcha. So we just measured up the rest of the house. We started in the master. And uh, now that we're working throughout, what we have left here, we want to see what we can maximize out of it and where we're going to get our waste at. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> hey guys, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll walk you through the finishing stages on this. I'll show you how we're going to finish out. We're just going to use a uh, one by two square up on the top for like a crown molding, very simple. On the bottom, we're going to use a real big on the baseboards, a one by six to give it that sort of blocky farmhouse look. We're going to do some cool things that are different. I'll show you the finished shiplock project up there. But again, those tips that I'm giving you, I've done this so many times. Uh, if you're in a situation where you know you're going to have to be accessing something, again, just do that one little nail method. And eventually you can just pull that ship lap off. If you're in more of a permanent situation like the house we're doing, make sure that you're putting a little bit of contact cement, or not contact cement, contractor um, glue on there just to hold that up and hold it up against the sheetrock. Again, I do not recommend putting ship lap up straight on beams. You can get some wave on it and eventually you can have dust from the attic actually settle down. You have, you'll have air movement through those cracks. It's not a good idea. Always put sheetrock up first, then put your shiplap. Uh, that's enough for today. I'm tired. I'm going inside. I'll talk to you later. Doc.